family, friends and the media fraternity farewell a legend. Health authorities increase surveillance on Zika virus. And Ryan Pinney first to qualify for Rio Olympics. This is National MTV News with Lorraine Genia. Good evening and thanks for joining me for Wednesday's news. The families and friends of the late media personality Mark Sapias paid their last tributes to him in Port Moresby today. The 50-year-old media pioneer died last week after a long battle with diabetes. His friends highlighted his passion for sports, unique match-calling talent, his down-to-earth personality and his excellent sense of humour. The body of the late Mark Sapiers arrived at Port Mosby's Reverend Sioni Kami Memorial Church around 11 this morning. Among the close families and friends present were the who's who of the media industry, a testament of Mark's legacy in the industry. Sharing the media legacy, Mark's sister Anne shared intimate memories of their childhood, describing him as full of life and fun. Growing up with Mark as a sister, he was the eldest of the four of us, myself, Richard and Simon. And being the eldest of uh, us four, he always was the big brother and he made it known to Richard, Simon and I. He threw his weight around a lot. <laughs> and I'm sure for those that know him, you know what he was like. A video eulogy was shown with all the highlights of Mark's life from early childhood with his parents to his education in Australia, the beginning of his love for sports and on to his vast accomplishments as a sports broadcaster, making Mark Sapiers a household name around Papua New Guinea. Mark provided distinguished services to MTV and to the National Broadcasting Corporation. Despite his popularity, his close friend and co-host Rod Pierce said Mark was a loyal friend. Once a mate, always a mate. Your mate is his, and his mate yours. His children also remembered Mark as not only a father, but a good friend and a mentor as well. I'm so proud of the man you love. Your legacy will live on forever. And that was one of my favorite things about Dad. No matter how sick he was, he always managed to put us first. He was very loving, but... In a very fun way. Yeah, no, my dad to me was my hero, my idol, Superman, Batman, whatever you want to call him. The late Mark Sapiers leaves behind his wife Margaret, four children, and one grandchild. His body will be flown to the East New Britain province tomorrow, where he will be finally laid to rest at Vunatagia on Friday. Delhi Waigeno, National. MTV News. Do not panic, but take note. That is a message from the National Department of Health and the World Health Organization on the Zika virus outbreak in some parts of the world. The national response team, headed by Dr. Boris Pavlin from WHO and Barry Ropper, NDOH Surveillance and Emergency Response Office, is taking immediate action to rapidly increase surveillance on the case. Expecting mothers or women of childbearing age are vulnerable to this disease. The good news is no case has been detected in PNG as yet. However, PNG has the same mosquito that can carry dengue, yellow fever, chikegunya virus and other mosquito-borne diseases. WHO and the Health Department Technical Civilians Team said that the outbreak was declared by WHO as a public health emergency of international concern only because of the recent infections in Brazil. It has been associated with an increase in the birth of babies with microcephaly, meaning a baby is born with a small head or brain. They had also been experiencing this this new outbreak of Zika virus uh, and so while it's not conclusive yet that the Zika virus is the cause of the uh, birth defects uh, it's concerning enough and there's enough unknown um, that the World Health Organization does consider this to be. Zika virus is present in the Pacific 
The first case was detected in Micronesia in 2007. PNG is at risk of having the virus. The development has been already gone going. Um, that if uh, Zika virus was around in PNG, I think we would have already detected because we have a laboratory that's already doing tests for dengue and other viruses. The virus is passing from a mosquito bite from an infected person onto another person. WHO confirmed that it is a mild illness and people will not know that they are sick. However, the, the big concern is that um, pregnant women um, who uh, get the infection may, may, uh, result, may ha end up with uh, their babies having birth defects. To prevent it, always sleep under a mosquito net during the day and night time. And always use insect repellent. It's not magic science. I think it is a very simple thing that people of Papua can do themselves in order to uh, uh, not only to prevent uh, the spread of Chica virus but dengue and uh, chikungunya. The symptoms include fever, skin rash, muscle and joint pain, red eyes, tiredness and headache. Even though there is no vaccine or treatment to Zika virus, the symptoms can be treated with common pain and fever medicines. Basinata Yama, National MTV News. Lack of police evidence has resulted in the dismissal of a case involving dangerous driving which resulted in the death of two people. Defendant Martin Suku, who appeared before the Bamana District Court this morning, was told to return home after spending three months at the Bamana prison. Tekla Gunga reports. It was alleged that on 17 September 2015, the defendant Suku drove a Toyota Camry sedan, grey in colour, from Morata to Waigani. It was heard that Suku ran off the road and hit two pedestrians. Police investigations revealed that the pedestrians were killed as a result and Suku was initially charged for dangerous driving, resulting in death. Following his mention, Senior Magistrate Cosmos Vidar said the court had not received an update on the progress of police investigations and can no longer adjourn the case. It is understood police prosecutors were not able to get a progressive report on the case and were told that Senior Constable Godfrey Stephen, the officer heading the investigation, was on leave. Following this, Magistrate Bidar struck out the case, stating that the matter can be pursued again when Constable Stephen returns from leave. In other matters, the National Court had decreased the bail amount from 500 to 200 kina for a woman in her late 20s, Christine Kinawat, who was charged for willful wounding of another woman. Kinawa's case has been urgent to February 17, also because of a lack of police evidence. Her case is the third that was listed today and was adjourned because of lack of police evidence. Thakla Gunga, National MTV News. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill has given hint of political will to upgrade PNG's rundown jail system. Mr O'Neill, in a media conference last week, has made assurance to allocated funding to improve capacity of both jail facilities and the CS staff welfare in the country. This follows concerns raised over crowding prisons and the deteriorating homes of prison staff all over the country. Edwin Fidelis reports. We've increased the number of uh, judges now. The Prime Minister, who is fully aware of the condition of jails in the country, have given assurance to pump money into upgrading the PNG's jail system. We are, we are very well aware and we are prioritizing on trying to assist them. The blame on the ever-increasing prison populations has been leveled on the number of remandees awaiting their sentences and the contribution from successive governments over the years failed to prioritize prison upgrades. We have been slowly putting more funds into trying to train, build capacity, look after the, uh, uh, the correctional officers. Uh, we're continuing to do that, but uh, we will, uh, of course, uh, look at uh, each of the prisons throughout the, uh, the country. Most of the uh, overcrowding is basically because people are waiting for court. While arrests and sentencing of convicts is done every day, there are also serious concerns raised about the welfare of prisoners and the state of the prisons that they will serve their terms. A recent visit to the Caravat prison in East New Britain province only revealed the state of jails all over the country. 
Staff accommodations are on the verge of collapsing. The perimeter fence around the prison are aging and the cells are overcrowded. Time number blow all Mary go on top of Abdusim ten I go. I'm spacing low here and lip lip to mass. Prisoners who have refused to speak on camera have sent us a note revealing their struggles within the Keravat prison. Their note stated that balanced meals are not served in the prison, water quality in the prison is poor, prison staff are not responding to sick inmates quickly, and the court processes in East New Britain is slow. Most of the remandies are waiting for their court hearing for more than two years. The appointment of new judges in Port Mosby is expected to respond to this backlog of pending court cases. The CS Commissioner Michael Waipo meanwhile has admitted that the PNG Correctional Service Department is really in desperate needs as it struggles to secure funding from the government to fix these problems. It's understood a proposal from the CS Department containing plans to upgrade the prison system will be presented to the government to seek funding support, but to see tangible developments may take a little longer. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. Police have yet to identify suspects involved in the murder of a young man whose body was found at the Lay Bowling Club in the early hours of Friday morning. Police believe the young man may have been beaten to death. Investigations will establish what happened. The body was discovered on the bowling lawn by security guards. The deceased was from a mixed parentage of Simbu and Salamawa in the Morobe province. He lives at the Bundi camp area. Police suspect he died from a severe beating. His body had bruises and cuts to his face. The cause of that will be confirmed after a post-mortem. So far, no eyewitnesses have come forward to provide leads. But police say those who know him have pointed out that he also suffers from a mental disorder. Uh, we are appealing to any eyewitnesses or anybody who has information on that to come forward and assist police with the investigations into the death at bowling club. In another incident on Saturday, a body of a man was found floating among debris and shrubs along the Bumbu River. The body had been washed downstream. Police were alerted and attended to the scene with hospital officials. They were approached by a relative of the deceased who had been looking for him along the river banks. It was later discovered that the deceased was with two other male relatives and had been drinking at West Taraka. The three, after drinking, decided to cross a small creek to go to their houses on the other side. However, it had been raining very heavily at that time and while crossing, the deceased slipped and was carried away by the strong current. Mata Lewis, National MTV News, Lay. In another incident in Lay, a one-year-old infant has lost her life. She was believed to have died after being sexually molested by a male relative. The mother of the infant reported the matter to police that between the months of October last year to the 14th of January this year, the infant had been sexually molested. Medical reports obtained from Angar General Hospital have also confirmed that she had been sexually molested. The male suspect is on the run and police are now working on the case and have asked other relatives to assist in locating him. And you're with National MTV News, West Papuan registration to begin soon. That and more local stories when we come back. Welcome back to the news. The Papua New Guinea government will begin the registration of West Papuans living all over the country more than 40 years after the first lot of West Papuans crossed the border as political refugees. Prompted by a public outcry after the asylum deal with Australia, the registration is part of a nationwide move to give West Papuans formal recognition either as citizens or refugees. An announcement for registration will be made soon for West Papuans living in Leigh City. As the country prepares to mark World Cancer Day tomorrow, Morbe continues to be in a battle to fight cancer cases at its Angau Hospital. Radiotherapist Becky Pice says Angau Hospital is providing the service of fighting cancer despite lack of equipment issues experienced over the years. Angau serves as a referral hospital in Morbe, 
but has been admitting cancer patients from as far as the Highlands and other Mamasa region provinces. These are the women gathered at Lays Engau Hospital this morning to get free screening for cancer. Today's advocacy activity is a lead-up to World Cancer Day tomorrow, marked worldwide in race of awareness. Lays Engau Hospital is home to the country's only cancer treatment unit. It is a facility struggling with funding. Pa patients, by the time they get to us, they have to wait because we don't have this kind of equipment available. We have a cobalt source, we have a machine, but the source is already past its half-life, meaning that the, the strength is already reduced by half, but now it's like it's quarter strength. Like. Some of their machines have had technical faults for over seven months now, pending the health department's action to get the machines fixed. Lays Enga Hospital is another health agency that has been working to combat mouth, breast and cervical cancer in Morobe. We have the... Um, Experts available, but we don't have the equipment to go with that. But we are making sure that we still provide service. Tomorrow, more people are expected to get tested. The focus for years has been on the rate of cancer among women and girls. Colin Barilai, National MTV News, Lay. A flood-prone village along the Bulola Highway has developed a disaster risk management plan after floods threatened people's lives and destroyed their food gardens. The International Office for Migration helped people from Timini Village create the plan. It's an important plan that will ensure the people are prepared for the worst. As Bethany Harriman reports, disaster risk management plans are needed in places around the country known for natural disasters. Timini Village, like many other places in Papua New Guinea, didn't have proper plans to help people deal with the effects of disasters. In 2013, the village suffered from floods when rivers burst their banks, food gardens were destroyed. They now have a disaster risk management plan. The International Office for Migration helped them formulate one. Yesterday, the people practice an emergency drill they learned. So Timini is located in a, in a slope where, which is, you know, surrounded by two rivers. So for the Timini people, they're exposed to flooding. Timini's story of 2013 was a small case that could have been handled better if provincial authorities had a disaster management plan. Last year, during the drought, most places received little assistance. Some got none at all. Sluggish bureaucracy and the lack of funding slowed down relief assistance. The general sentiment in places prone to disasters like Timini is they need to be more self-aware before disaster hits. Many Papua New Guineans feel they can't rely heavily on their own government for help. This is like one plan, good plan, something when come up into the community because over the time the life the mipla, mipla is a place maybe inside the disaster or some water. According to IOM, the sustainability of the Timini disaster plan relies on the community's will to be prepared. The next time a flood does come, the Timini people will be prepared. Food security measures would have been taken. In the future, disaster committee members will be prepared with disaster drills that would have been practiced by the people. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News, Lay. Concerns have been raised by the opposition on the high rate of inflation. Opposition leader Don Pollier says the prices of goods and services are still too high for ordinary Papua New Guineans to afford. This is despite the drop in domestic fuel prices. The drop in domestic fuel prices is a direct result of the drop in global oil prices. This is expected to lead to a drop in the prices of goods and services. However, there seem to be no reflection of the fall in fuel prices on the overall prices of goods and services. The opposition leader, Don Pollier, described this as uncalled for. He urged business houses and individuals to refrain from ripping off their customers. Polly says the burden should be lifted off the shoulders of ordinary Papua New Guineans struggling to make ends meet to survive. He has also called on the Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and Treasury Minister Patrick Pruach to justify this increase. Consumer and competition watchdog ICCC echoed similar sentiments for service providers to be fair on their customers. Whilst commending ICCC for their efforts, police says they have to do more to protect the consumers from being cheated. 
nobody is telling us that I am the first one reducing the price of rice, tin fish. Nobody is telling the people of this country. No, none of the business houses are being honest. None of the airlines are telling us that we are reducing because we have the fuel price changes. Everyone is very silent. The onus is also on consumers to start pressuring the government to do more to reduce the prices of goods and services. Polier urged them to hold business houses and service providers accountable by reporting situations of overpricing to ICCC for investigation. Mickey Cavera, National MTV News. Former Lutheran Church Head Bishop Giagera Wenge says the 5 million kina presented to the church by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill during the 30th ELC PNG Synod in Finchafen was taken back to the Treasury Office in Port Moresby to have the name on the cheque changed. Wenge said the 5 million kina was sourced purposely to revive the Lutheran Shipping Proprietor Limited. His fear is that the 5 million kina would go missing just like the other funds that have been coming from the Morbe provincial government. But check is written to Evangelical Lutheran Church of Papua New Guinea. And so the see that when the money comes into office, money can be evaporated because the experiences have been there already. Provincial government gives the money, and money that says it creates debts in the banks. When the money is put in, is gone. Same practice may happen, so money is taken to Treasury to change the name from Lutheran Church to Lutheran Shipping, where its purpose was given. And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.3295 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.3220 US dollars, 0.4549 Australian dollars, 0.2915 Euro, and 38.31 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, coffee and copper closed higher, while gold and cocoa closed the day lower, crude oil closed lower, while palm oil and copper closed the day higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 25 points lower, the ASX closed at 15 points lower, and the All Ordinaries closed at 18 points higher. You're watching Wednesday's news. Putibam elders worried about local language dying and student absenteeism can result in termination. Stay tuned for that and more. Welcome back. Village elders in the Butibam village in Morbid province are taking steps to preserve the Yomkawa language spoken largely by older members of the clans. They fear the language may be lost within 10 years. They are now working with the film crew to preserve the dying language through audio recordings and the filming of a documentary. Butibam is one of the other high villages in the Lei district. The village lies near the Bumbu River in Lei city. The people here and in nearby villages speak the Yomkawa language, but it is a language that is slowly dying. The language is understood but no longer spoken among the younger generations. Tokpising has taken over. Jonathan Benjamin is the chairman of the Butibam village. He and some of the older people in the village are now the only ones who can organize traditional ceremonies using the Yomkawa language. This is the seventh generation of the original people who settled here. At least three decades ago, the elders realized the language was dying. Five generations, they come down. And top places start to lose now. The old people in the village are now taking the first steps in many years to preserve their traditions through audio recordings and the filming of a documentary. The Momase film, in partnership with Water PNG and the Hai Hope Foundation, are assisting village elders to record the Yomkawa language through their traditional songs with the filming of a documentary for the village. The film and the audio recordings will be sent to the National Film Institute in Goroka. 
Vutibam Village is the first to carry out this initiative. The Mumase film will also carry out similar programs in the other high villages. PNG's rich cultures may be lost if they are not practiced regularly. The young generation today needs to practice these rich cultures of the country so that they are preserved. Our traditions and cultures will be lost if they are not passed on. Mata Luis, National MTV News, Lay. Students who have been continuously missing classes for 30 days will be excluded from studies. This was a message from Christine Suga, head teacher of St. Teresa's Primary School in Port Moresby. Mrs. Suga said this policy, sanctioned by the Education Department, is effective for all schools in the country. With the government's tuition fee free education policy, many schools in the country have seen an increase in student enrollments this year. The Education Department has played an important role in the implementation of policies that safeguard the academic welfare of these students. And one of the set policies invoked and affected by schools is to monitor student attendance. Speaking to MTV yesterday, St. Teresa's Primary School at teacher Christine Suga said there are specific education policies that deal with students' attendance. More than uh, 30 days absenteeism, mm -hmm. uh, no explanations, uh, it is a must that it's adhered to the policy of education. They have to come with a medical record. Otherwise, my school says, write a letter, explain the reason, and we refer them to education office. Students missing classes for 30 days will be terminated according to education policy. To follow the routines of the requirements, write a letter of the absenteeism, absenteeism, and refer to the authority and they will advise them what to do because it's beyond. However, they will be considered for medical reasons and genuine reasons on appeal through the Education Department. Eric Aruma, National MTV News. The only technical institution in Gulf Province, the Malalao Vocational Centre continues to face infrastructural constraints each year. For 2016 enrolment, at least 50 students have registered, but head teacher Philip Carava says student numbers have decreased over the years due to the poor state of the centre's facilities. The Malalawa Vocational Centre was built in 1974 to teach life skills courses to Gulf students. In the first 20 years of its establishment, it was administrated by expatriates and had enrolled students from both East and West Kerama. Head teacher Kavara has been teaching since 2013. His biggest task is to produce quality outcome with the school's limited resources. So, resource, the equipments must be on the ground. We try on the board, we try around the, everywhere to break open the poor kid. After all, they are innocent young people. The center is entirely dependent on the government's tuition fee-free funds for its operational costs. Uh, not getting support from other stakeholders, it's like uh, we cannot do things one manner. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, why am I doing all this hard work for? Do I have giants around here to support me? Of course they are. The school's biggest challenge is its limited facilities. At the moment, it does not have a female dormitory, lacks a proper ablution, kitchen and laundry facilities. Thakla Gunga, National MTV News. Building bridges has been the focus of the Lower Wagga local level government in the Komo Magarima district in Hela. Recently, the Lower Wagga people witnessed the opening of a bridge that will connect schools, a health facility and a mission station. The bridge was opened by Hela Deputy Governor Thomas Potape. They danced and sang to welcome the development and completion of this important infrastructure because for the past 20 years, the Lower Waga people have risked their lives crossing this river. So, me open this me open this bridge. Hey, 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 hey,
let's go. Let's the go. Ulugara Bridge was built with the counterfunding cost of 165,000 by the Lower Waga LLG and the Como Magarima district. This bridge is the fourth in the area. In the middle of the city, the money, the middle of the city, the middle of the city, the middle of the city, the community. Local MP and Assembly voted Hela Governor Francis Potapes says the current politics will not deter delivery of services. He says 2016 is a new era for Hela. New era in the Hela province. New era for all young women. New era for young women. New era for all many groups. The President Gulua Wagina called on the government to fully release the 500,000 kina promised to LLGs. Because we have to see one time. People now, this is the kind of something that I'm not giving service to more of people. That's all now, government is rising to 500,000 now. I'm not giving short win now. The opening of the bridge will now see the easy transport of materials and movement of people to access services in the lower Waga LLG and in town. Politics mean nothing. Politics mean nothing. Government services are important. Jake Lepave, Jr., National MTV News. Chukai Sports is up next with Ryan Pinney prepping for Rio and Michael Marum settled on a new look SBPNG Hunters team to take on the Penrith Panthers. Stay tuned. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Papua New Guinea's Superfish Ryan Pinney is the first athlete to qualify for the Rio Olympics in August this year. This will be his fourth time to participate at the Olympic Games. He'll compete in the 100 meter backstroke, butterfly and freestyle events. After great success in the 2015 Pacific Games, Ryan Pinney has continued with his campaign for the Rio Olympic Games. He has already started his Olympic preparations attending competitions in Australia. Pinney is determined to improve his timing after swimming an Olympic B qualifying for three events, 100 meter butterfly, backstroke and freestyle. Pinney is the first athlete in PNG to qualify by rights to represent PNG at the Rio Olympic Games this year. This will be his fourth appearance. In 2012, Ryan was settled on it being his last games, but the Pacific Games got him into the stroke of things, and Rio is now his gold. Mike Koime, National MTV Sports. The new look SB PNG Hunters are on track to open the new National Football Stadium. Last week, Hunters coach Michael Marum was hoping for options in his team. However, the, however, on the eve of the match, has now cemented his squad. This is the only trial match for the Hunters before they kick off the 2016 Interest Super Cup season. Coach Michael Marum will use 23 players for this trial match. The 23-man squad include new recruits Ishmael Balkawa, Watson Boas, Silas Kahuna, Benjamin Hetra, Philemon Kimisive, Tuvi Lepan, Justin Olam, William Aquila, and John Ruggie, who are all expected to get game time. Marum will work out a starting 17 at this weekend's trial match for the Interest Super Cup opening round clash against the South Logan Magpies at Davis Park, Logan City, Brisbane on March 6. Several players will miss this weekend's clash due to injury. Brandy Peter, Anderson Benford and Enoch Maki are the most serious casualties. Timothy Lomai was not included in the 23-man squad as he is still under suspension. Tickets for the match have gone on sale today at all stop and shop outlets in Port Mosby. Ticket prices for the match will be 50 kina in the grandstand and 25 kina in the outer stands. Elijah Lavet, National MTV Sports. You're watching True Guy Sports. We'll be back shortly with an update on preparations for the Kimbe Games. Don't go away. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Now Papua New Guinea meets 20-year-old Abel Rednut, the young left-back who plays for FC Port Moresby in the Telecom National Soccer League. 
He comes from a mixed parentage of Central, Oral and East New Britain. He is among the first 11 to take the field and is already a seasoned campaigner. I just I dream of excelling in the sport that I love playing, which is soccer. Um, yeah, and to see my abilities in the sport where, where it can take me in the next five or six years to come. As a child growing up, however, he feels more Moribian than anywhere else. Um, I'd say because as a child growing up, uh, I stayed with my mom's parents. Um, and my grandfather is from Morobe, so I lived most of my childhood with him. So, yeah, I mostly go back to Morobe for holidays. Elwin Komlong's goal during the Pacific Games, a recurring memory for him. So we were just like really holding in and everything. And then when Jacob Saboa took the um, penalty and then when we just saw the ball headed by Alvin in to that far post. Oh, we all went into the field. It was a really good feeling. <laughs> in our heads, there was nothing in our heads. All we could know was that we we're going to win bronze for our country. And <laughs> yeah. Back on the local front and in the domestic competition, Redinat is proud of his team in FC Port Moresby. A squad that to date has more members with international experience, Bahe Kari. Firstly, it's an honor really playing alongside people who have, you know, repped the country internationally and everything. But like uh, Charlie, I knew Charlie when we were small. We played school soccer together and we played together in SUE under 17s, under 20s, and under 23s. So, yeah. Um, it's always fun playing with him. Uh, with the coach, Reggie, uh, he's been a good uh, mentor for us all. Keeps on giving us advice and um, he talks to us, tells us what to do. Um, he guides us in, like he's been there, he's done that already. So he's, um, he's, really, he's really good in motivating us boys. So playing, with, uh, playing under his, playing for his team and everything is really good. It's an honor. His captain Roland Bala, also an influence on his playing style as well. And like all young players, Redinat looks to the future. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. While the contracts have already been awarded for the construction of sports infrastructure in Kimber, West New Britain, for the seventh PNG Games, the host organizing committee, in conjunction with the PNG Sports Foundation, are yet to confirm the number of sports. The PNGSF have outlined the logistical demands of the Games as one of their biggest challenges. However, have said the sooner the number of sports are confirmed, the easier it will be to coordinate the Games. The sixth BSP PNG Games held in the industrial hub of Papua New Guinea, Lake City, proved to be one of the best games since the inception of the biannual PNG Games program. Logistically and financially supported by corporate houses and the government through the Morobe Provincial Government, it was one of the biggest games, catering for over 9,000 athletes competing in all 28 sports and at 19 different venues. This year, however, may see a shortfall in the number of sports that will be included at the 7th PNG Games due to the logistical complications within Kimbe Town. Chamalili says the sooner the number of sports are confirmed, the easier it will be for the PNG Sports Foundation and host organizing committee to iron out all operational plans for the games. Depending on the number of sport, that will also determine the, the population that will be needing transport. So if we, if we can confirm the number of sports that are going to be played, that will really help us in terms of managing the games in 2016. But definitely it will be on November. With the lack of sports facilities and infrastructural developments in Kimbe, a number of sports will be forced to withdraw. At present, Kimbe does not have facilities to cater for swimming and squash to say the least. A disadvantage for the grassroots athletes who utilize the PNG Games as a platform into launching their professional sporting careers. Right to the head of Masone. Masone is having to backpedal to... Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. Your Wednesday's news will have your weather details when we come back. True Kai Sports.
Now looking at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, occasional showers and thunderstorms in Port Moresby and Kerama, showers with occasional thunderstorms in Daru, cloudy with a chance of few occasional showers in Popondeta and mostly fine tonight and showers tomorrow in Alotau. In the Momase region, showers for Ley, showers with occasional thunderstorms in Medang, Wewak and Bunimore. In the New Guinea Islands, mostly fine tonight and showers tomorrow in Lorengau. Few showers with occasional thunderstorms in Kaviang, Kimbe, Kokopo and Rabal, and showers with thunderstorms in Kimbe. And in the Highlands region, showers with occasional thunderstorms and morning fog for all centres. And the forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PNG, Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island, to Kerama to Yule Island and with waters of eastern and western Milan Bay Islands, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 metres, waters of Yule Island to Hood Point, to Samurai Islands, seas of 0.3 to 1.2 metres, waters of Samurai Islands to Cape Fogo, seas of 0.3 to 1.3 metres, Waters of Cape Vogel to Finchafen, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 metres. Waters of Finchafen, including Bittius Strait, CSC Islands to Long Island, seas of 1.3 to 2.5 metres. Waters west of Long Island to Medang, to Bogia, to Wewa, to Vanimore and Northern PNG Indonesian border, seas of 0.7 to 2.0 metres. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 1.3 to 2.0 metres and waters of New Island to New Britain to Bougainville, seas of 1.0 to 2.0 metres. And now the ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea. Seas slight converging with northwest to northeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. In the Solomon Sea, seas slight to moderate with northwest winds at 10 to 20 knots, tending southwest. In the Bismarck Sea, seas moderate to northwest winds at 10 to 20 knots with gusts. And in the Pacific Ocean, seas moderate to rather rough with northeast winds at 15 to 25 knots with gusts. Now recapping our main stories for tonight. Family, friends and the media fraternity farewell a legend. Health authorities increase surveillance on Zika virus and Ryan Pinney first to qualify for Rio Olympics. And that's the news, sports and weather for tonight, Wednesday the 3rd of February 2016. Until next time, I'm Lorraine Genia. Pleasant viewing. Good night.